could see security guards coming across the wharf with dogs and carrying a lot of bags and a lot of gear. So panic set in. I took off screaming, running into the mess room to some of the guys who were already there. They're here, they're here, it's on. Someone yelled out, get to the straddles, get to the straddles. They're going to try and throw us here. We're going to get them, we're going to fix them. Guys were screaming on the radio. They're over here, they're over here. Under crane three, they're under crane four. It was just kill or be killed, I think. And we wouldn't be taken alive. There was a, they were all dressed in black. There must have been maybe 100 of them, 150. They were jumping on forklifts, um, just taking the keys out of forklifts. And then they were basically telling us that we were trespassing and that we had to leave immediately. They wouldn't tell us what for. They were just hired thugs, really. The biggest blokes you've ever seen in your life. I don't know whether they were, but they certainly looked at it at the time. They were clad up in the black with the balaclavas and there's dogs and dogs holding dogs and more dogs and, um, yeah, all looking very official. You know, I'd been in the job only a short time, 12 months, just recently married, just bought a house. I thought, what am I going to do? You know, my whole world had just come crashing down in a matter of 10 minutes. In a dramatic move overnight, Patrick Stevedore has sacked its entire union workforce. With military precision, new workers, escorted by security guards with dogs, took over a number of the company's 17 wharf sites around Australia. We were devastated to the fact that, you know, we, we had people that, that we looked up to and we, we trusted and all of a sudden the trust was gone and, you know, our hearts were in the gutter. I've been 18 years on the waterfront here and we get told now that I'm trespassing on the job that where I have and I pull the ring out to work for this company and they do this to you. That's the sort of mob they are. Well, if I'm trespassing, I've been trespassing 30 years. The docks around the country, Wappies were locked out. Their non-union replacements had moved in. Although not yet up to speed, the new generation of Wharfies are already on the go in Fremantle. On the East Coast, they'll be operational tonight. One of the, one of the most awful feelings was actually seeing someone else up there driving your machine, earning a, earning a living and doing it for scab wages. I mean, it's an awful word, but that's exactly what it was. And That was a very emotional period of time for our rank and filers who work with Patrick's, the sacking, the questions. Uh, I was an official in Adelaide at the time, and it was traumatic, to say the least, to try and explain to families and children why their father has been sacked and the reasoning behind it. And once again, why there was no support, an actual, uh, a very compliant and complicit government the action was fully endorsed by the federal government in a press statement issued late last night. These guys have been for months trying to destroy the company and now they're at the gate saying let us in. It's inconceivable for anybody to believe anything other than that the union declared financial war on the company. They did this softening up and, and bastardising of us for many, many months before they actually stepped. This was a very military style plan dispute and um, so we developed tactics obviously to, to meet this within the, within the limits of our, our, our ability to respond. It says a lot about the great spirit of those workers. It says a lot about the union too and its capacity to fight when it had to fight and its ability to rally the voices so that they were heard all over the community and all over the country. Join the MUA, come and join the MUA. It's all been a, uh, a secretive corporate manoeuvre to engineer the dismissal of the workforce. I believe at the start of that dispute we probably had less than 20% support. Towards the end, I think the majority of Australians didn't like Warfleys but they recognised something was really, really wrong in what was happening here. If Wolfies go, if Wolfies can, Wolfies can't organise, if they can't collectively bargain, then the rest of us have got no hope. On April the 7th, 1,400 plus workers were summarily and illegally dismissed from their jobs in the middle of the night with armed guards, with dogs on chains, 
with men in balaclavas, scenes that this nation had never witnessed before, and let me say, should never ever witness again. Join the MUA, come on, join the MUA. Oh, workers, can you stand it? Tell me if you can. Will you be a lousy scab? Or will you the, the ball had been bounced. It was going to be tough, and I sold my car. I had a Toyota Hilux. I paid seventeen thousand dollars for it, and I sold it for eight thousand. And you know, I, I, we had bills to pay. I had a mortgage. A lot of the other guys had mortgages, but. The, the help that we got from the general community was just unbelievable. Um, one night a lady bought cakes down and well, we'd never ever met her before and she said my, my name's so and so, I want you to have these cakes and there was these beautiful sponge cakes and another lady delivered pizzas nearly every night. We formed a group which was called WOW, which was Women of the Waterfront. Um, once a week the men would go to the markets for us, um, we'd make up food parcels for the families, there was lots of uh, kids there. Um, it was a real fa family atmosphere for us. I spent most of my time on the picket line. I'd, I'd go to TAFE and then I'd be finished by four o'clock and I'd go down there. Brad would spend 12, 13 hours a day down there. I'd come home with the kids. It was a very tough time, but I lived through it. So that was, you know, only for the, my uh, second family down there I don't, and the union, I don't think I would have lived through it. The experience of having wives come to me and, and, and confidentially and quietly say to me, are we, really, we going to win this one? I'm really worried about it. Seeing young kids come to the picket line with their pocket money, put it in the donation bin. Those small things will always remain with me as the defining nature of when workers come together with a common struggle and a common bond. I can imagine it might have been like that for people in the, in the trenches in the Second and First World War. We needed to uh, main, be able to maintain the picket lines uh, everywhere. If, uh, if one uh, picket line broke down, uh, it was an input for Patrick's to be able to, uh, to break the union. The latest battle line, Cood Railway Gates. A violent clash as police try unsuccessfully to gain control of a fourth entrance to East Swanston Dock. Sparks flew also in Sydney, Patrick officials cut their way through union locks on the dock gates, letting the new workforce in. The protesters fought back, refusing to accept court orders to let the trucks through. And in Brisbane, 20 sacked wharfies chained themselves to train tracks, keeping containers of perishable goods off the docks. An Adelaide freight train was turned away, the union claiming an early victory. Just before dawn, West Australian riot police moved in, determined to break the human chain and force the sacked workers off the docks. You can feel the tension running through your arms where, where people lock in. You can feel them sort of, the, the not shake, just the, the vibration, the, the quivering, um, and just think, well, these weren't people that were out for confrontation. These weren't, these weren't people that are looking for trouble. These just people that, little old grannies and uh, blokes in suits and ties. And it was an amazing cross-section of people that basically, okay, I don't want to be here, but I need to, but someone needs to, to make the stand. And they were scared and all the rest of it. They didn't know what was going to happen. It was probably the first time they'd ever had a confrontation like this with, a, with an authority figure. Yeah, balls he has. Big effort. Well, this, this is John Howard's Australia. This is what we've come to. They're, they're, they're singing We Shall Not Be Moved at the moment. Um, so um, there's been all sorts of rumours of police horses down in Footscray Road. Uh, they're unsure of where the police will be coming through. Um, but, uh... One of the most historical nights was the 17th and 18th of April. The police were making some headway until about 7, 7.15 when the CFMEU, uh, the building industry unions, had made a decision to walk off the job and come down and uh, support the peaceful assembly. And in fact, they came in behind the police. It ended up with the building unions behind the police, the police in the middle and the peaceful assembly jamming the police in, if you like. And the police turned around and, uh, and went back. And mothers, sisters, brothers held the line. When you try to crush people's rights, when you try to destroy their lives for an ideology or a political view, what you do is make them much stronger. It revitalised the Maritime Union. It revitalised the Australian trade union movement.
to revitalise the international trade union movement, dock workers section in particular, the ILWU, the great West Coast Longshoremen's Union who sent that ship back, scab loaded ship. This ship was loaded with scab labour, it should turn around and go back to Australia. The world labour movement was crying out for an opportunity to show its support and so when the opportunity arose because of the strength of the International Transport Workers Federation and I have to say the unique position of this union whereas uh, we had Charlie Fitzgibbon, Taz Bull, myself and now Paddy Crumlin all in very senior executive positions of that union the confidence and the support of the Australian unionists for other countries was they were dying to make a a, a contribution back. And I think the government of the day would rue the day that they challenged us to see if we could get support from the UK or from the North Americans or from the Indians. And of course we got support from all three. It's ironic when you look back now and, and see that um, uh, that's now the strategy um, and has been ever since. I never had any doubt right from the beginning that we would win in the end because what Patrick's had done uh, and what the government had done was so, so self-evidently against uh, the law and the spirit of the law. The court had decided that the decision of Justice North was free from appellable error. <laughs> That month was probably the most extraordinary of my practising life. On the day we got judgment in the High Court, there was a, a big burly guy there on the cleaning staff, I think, and he rushed up to us and said, thanks guys, we all feel a bit safer. And really, I think it's what it was about. Because if a government and uh, a big company could destroy the MUA, then no workers in Australia were going to be safe at all. You can bruise my pride and bust my face. Let that die. The tears. Gee, it's ten years ago, you know. Um, the tears that, that came from from the guys when when the High Court made that decision was unbelievable. Don't count me out when I'm on the floor. We'll win again. We've won before. The streets will. Honestly, I've, I've never felt jubilation like it. I've never felt so good as a collective group of us and to afford as hard as we did, not just as wharfies and, and seafarers and just for Patrick's, but just the whole of Australia getting behind us. I think, I think most people in Australia would have felt just as happy as what we did. Today is a great day for the union movement. A great day. I think today signals the end of Peter Reith's career. The time has come for the Industrial Relations Minister to ride into the sunset. I swear I'll never lay down and die. We want to get back in the gate as soon as we possibly can and get the joint working. I still remember the night I tried to walk back in. I wasn't even rostered that night. I just wanted to get back in. They turned me around and sent me back out again. The workers united will never be defeated. We sung that. We never stopped singing that actually for the whole two months, but it never felt better singing it as we walked past those, those bosses and, um, you know, basically back into work where we, where we belong. I just remember standing behind uh, the fence and I couldn't see the men that were in, but I could hear them shouting, MUA here to stay. And that was a really, really uh, great experience. MUA here to stay, MUA here to stay. And that went on until they got to the lunchroom. And that was a heart-wrenching feeling to know we'd won. What gets forgotten is that um, we went back uh, in the gate on no money. We then had to go and negotiate an enterprise agreement. And I can tell you, that was difficult because there was changes contained in that agreement. 
and when we took those agreements to the members in stop work meetings, there were some pretty rowdy meetings and uh, that's somewhere where I'd never like to be again for all the difficulties we had to introduce. But the main thing was we had to get into the gate, we had to have agreement and that given us in the process of time to go back and improve those conditions. The Patrick's dispute, I guess, is one that um, you only want one in your life. We had good friends, great friends, workmates, wouldn't go back when we won the dispute. They said, we wanted to be on that picket, we wanted to show them, but I could never go back. They took a redundancy and some went into other industries and went away. And some aren't coping that well. They've never gotten over that dispute. You know, there was people took their own lives as a result of it, so um, there's no looking back in joy at that dispute. From John Howard down through Peter Reef uh, to the owners of Patrick's and all of the smaller players that were in that dispute, uh, responding without question to the government and the boss's orders in respect of it, um, in my opinion, should uh, remain um, disgraced for the rest of their careers. I am not forgiving in that respect at all. It was an inspirational, it was an inspirational time because you were facing a level of moral and ethical turpitude and corruption that Australia had never seen before. And the only thing between that and a decent and fair and democratic way of life in our country was the determination of those workers and their union and all of their supporters, community supporters, union supporters, international supporters, to identify what was going on and be prepared to support them. And every day for the last 10 years, and no doubt for the rest of my working life, and many others will be looking back on that as the struggle we had to win and that we did win. Look, I've had a good life in the last 10 years thanks to the job I've got now and I wouldn't have had that life if I wasn't still here. I love my job and wouldn't have it any other way. You know, it was all about the new way and he brought in his scabs and the scabs were the, they were the ones that were going to take over the waterfront, they were going to work under his terms and his conditions. I've been here 18 years now and it's never, it's never been better. Um, I, had a, I had a young family, kids and a mortgage, so mate, I'm, where, I'm in a good place or where I want to be. There was one final thing that, that actually, you know, that blew my mind at the end. You know, this is probably maybe a month or two after, the, after we'd gone back in the gate. And we saw a, a picket line. There was a picket line out the front of Corrigan's office. You know, they, had, they were under a Patrick's banner. And um, we sort of said, we're not picketing anymore. We've, we've, actually, we've actually gone back to work. Everything's sweet. What's going on here? <laughs> they were actually the scabs picketing that they'd lost their jobs. And they were actually filthy on Chris Corrigan that they'd actually been that actually been sacked. That was just beautiful to see, actually. I actually couldn't believe it. I belong.